Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's a link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show increases the live audience, of course, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please, please share the show. And one last time, if you are new to the channel or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Nummy Num and Ranty. How are you both doing, gentlemen? Doing good, thank you. Excellent. Not bad, not bad. I'm still eating a sandwich, though, so I might have to go on mute for a minute or two. How are you, Nummy? You good? Yeah, just waking up. What, the taste of toothpaste as always? <laughs> what time is it there, 9 a.m.? Yeah. Just gone. Yeah, 9am. I've been around with the chat room for the last half an hour. I'm actually going to put a link. To, I'm going to send you an image, Nathan. You might like this image. It's um, a friend of mine. Posted it on her Facebook. Um, give me a second and I'll, uh, I'll, send, yeah, you the, I'll send you the image. <clears throat> Does the friend get a shout out or not? Um... Yeah, I'll I'll do all that in a second. Let me just send you the image first. Okay, do. Uh, where the hell's it gone? Find it now. Very odd. on Skype. Yeah. Um, hang on. I know what. For whatever reason, it's not, it's saving it and then it's disappeared. So I'll have to get it one last time. Um, or just screen share it. Uh, save it, image as. Um, All right. I'm gonna love this because <clears throat> it's a of, a of a sunrise, and the person in question she lives in uh, Kentucky. So I'm just gonna send you the image now. Hopefully you should get it. It's moments. There you go. There we go. Got it. So you want make me to stick that, this up on screen? Make that what you will. Perhaps you could display it. I can put it up for the audience. Mm. Talk us through what it is then, because it looks like the sun's half cut off in midair. Indeed right? it does. Very now, strange. she's not a flat earther or anything. She's just a friend of, um, of someone that I know. And... Uh, she said, I see this all the time. And she's taken lots of images of it and she just posted this particular one. So I've asked her for more anyway, but this is just one sunrise that she's seen. Now, if you, t if you pay attention to the top of the sun, the brightest part, that's where I actually believe the real sun is. I believe that all the rest is just, um, what is it like? It's hitting the atmosphere and expanding. It's not the real sun. And that would make sense. It was. It's like the bottom half of it is um meeting a refraction area refraction zone and it's cutting it off and you see the same at sunset as well you see a very bright spot right at the very top of the sun and the rest of it is is much redder rather than bright yellow 
That's a weird I don't, know, I don't know if I fully agree. I, th- I think it's more the case that, it, well, I'm going to guess off the cuff just from this one image that what, what she's showing, if she gets that repeatedly, is the actual horizon. So the line where it's being cut off is the actual horizon. Wow. I mean, I get this same effect here. There's a particular hill up the road from me, and I'm going to do this um, as the sun starts to come into that position, but there's a road that dips down, and at sunset, the sun, I think, will set on the, the actual horizon, even though the uh, topography means that the, the land dips below that. And in technical terms, if you were on a ball, as the world spins, the only thing that's going to obscure the sun is the the land mass itself. That's what obscures it. Whereas in reality, I think the sun will always set like this. I know this is a sunrise, but you know what I'm getting at. Um, cool. it'll, it'll set on the actual horizon every single time. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to see if I can capture that. It's probably going to be next month. But this is cool. Thanks Where is this picture taken? This is from Kentucky in America. Okay. Nice. Thanks. Big shout yeah. out to whoever took that picture. Do you know, presumably the person I do. doesn't want naming. Lisa J. Kenny. Big shout out to Lisa. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah. I went down to do some filming today. Needn't have bothered, to be fair. I mean, the, the forecast was pretty pretty good. Um, <clears throat> except as soon as I stepped out of my house this morning, first thing I noticed was the uh, the planes had been spraying. And I didn't realise how actually how bad they had actually been spraying until I could see the checkered formation, you know, like in squares, blocks of them. And then I got down to the beach, and you could see where the the clouds, apparent clouds that were in the sky were nothing but chemtrails, basically. And you couldn't see very far. You couldn't see anything from where I was. So I left it a while, uh, went back about three hours later. Um, same thing. And what was really frustrating was the the tide was coming in just as I would have thought the original, you know, when I did the original footage and I got underneath the refraction zone? Yeah. Um, it was the same type of swell on the water. So the water was very calm, very still. It was the right temperature. <laughs> it was, the, it was a, the right sort of time as well. It was a very similar time. And I was so excited to get down there. And everything was, you couldn't see a thing. You literally couldn't see more than three miles away from the top of the, um, on top of the seawall. So I wasn't even on the beach. You couldn't see anything. The amount of chemtrails that they've been spraying was ridiculous. Yeah, it was just I mean, like a mist everywhere. Quite my limited knowledge of chemtrails, I will say they definitely wash out visibility. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I videoed it. I've got two videos that I'm going to put up because I was so frustrated because I was expecting to go down and try and repeat the same experiment that I did before. And I thought that it was the, you know, the ideal chance to go and, and get a... a you know, a corroborating, um, you know, uh, piece of evidence. And of course, <laughs> you couldn't see anything. It was very, and they haven't really sprayed a lot. And it's only been the last, what, two or three days that they've been out spraying. And uh, I haven't really paid attention to the chemtrails recently, but today was really heavy, really, really heavy. And uh, yeah, I'll put those videos up later anyway, if anyone's interested in chemtrails, come and have a look at them because you'll, you'll see how bad they were today. Yeah, it's hard to get an idea of it when you're looking at the sky from England and you're used to seeing it pretty much all year round. It's only when someone like Patricia comes over to England and goes, wow, that's a lot of chemtrails. And you're like, well, that's fairly normal, actually. But apparently, you know, they see a couple of chemtrail planes going across in the States and it's like, wow, big deal, loads of chems. It's like, well, no, here it's continuous almost all the time. It's unusual when it doesn't happen, as Ranty's pretty much just said. Right. In fact, I'll get my card out and see whether or not I can uh, show you any of it. So give me five minutes, see if I can find what I'm looking for. And I'll show you how bad it was today. Oh, and Anthony's built my PC. Ah, So I should have a new PC tomorrow. You can't wait. I can't wait, actually, to get my hands on it. It's going to be awesome. I need to get my um, to get some software so I can start editing the videos again properly. 
because uh, I've been pretty lax. I've just been putting them up as I've filmed them, so I haven't really had time to to go through them and do a proper presentation. But probably in the next week or so, I should be able to do that. Cool. Right, let's see. Video, video, video. That was this morning. Right. Uh, do you want to present me? Yeah, sure. Be ready in a moment. Uh... All right. Let's see. Here we go. Right. So this was this morning. This was me on the beach. Uh, so here I am. I can't. See, I'm just basically showing you that I can't see anything. I can't even see the wind turbines. Can't see anything. Can't see over to Barrow. Barrow would be in that direction. Can't even see the mountains that would be behind Barrow. And uh, now I look up, and you can all this that looks like cloud. It's not cloud at all. It's chemtrails. It's like it's disgusting, basically. And. Uh, You'll see the, chip, the the formation in a minute, how they've been laying them. Look at that. I don't know if there's any people that you get in Australia or America that can see it, that, that get anything like this, but this is what we get hit with in the UK. That's fairly Everything standard, is... wouldn't you say? I mean, that that looks like my sky when they've been over. And they just keep doing it. So if there's a bit of wind, that will dissipate over the course of about 15 minutes into just a haze of what looks like clouds and then they'll just carry on doing it as that floats along the sky and then that's it i mean there was no clouds. sorry there was no clouds in the sky today at all it was just chemtrails and people don't realize that when they come out they might go out for the lunch they might have uh, paid no attention on the way to work gone into work in an office or something come out at lunchtime and there's a bit of cloud in the sky it's very misty but it's all that is is just chemtrails <laughs> it is a lot, isn't it? Do you see this over there, Mummy? Not so much. I have in the past we used to get uh chemtrailing that looked like that, but these days not so much. I guess they I don't know. I mean, who knows what what, what it is or why they're doing it, right? But I guess they target certain areas for whatever the reason. But I've noticed a, a marked absence of that kind of thing in uh, Toronto in the last few years. So this is the this is later on in the day. This is about th three hours afterwards, and this is me looking out. That's oh, that's where I normally do my filming from. Next, you know, sort of like to the right hand side of this. But can you see? You can barely see three miles. I would say because I can walk out, and it's around about half a mile to this, or a third of a mile to this. Um, but can you see all the, you can't see anything. It's all chemtrails that have just come down. You can't see anything at all. And this is from the seawall. And then in a minute, I'm going to turn up, uh, move across and show you where I would be looking at Barrow. And again, you can't see any of that. Just one sec. Hello. Hello, you're live on the air. <laughs> So, yeah, this is me showing the chemtrails again. Uh, so, right, just one second, guys. Just put myself on there. Could have done that for him. <laughs> chemtrails. It's one of those subjects that I don't, I don't care for a great deal. As much as I can look at a picture of chemtrails or observe them for myself and go, "There's chemtrails," or persistent yeah. contrails, or whatever the hell you want to call them, I couldn't care less. I've no idea what their purpose is. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're causing me any harm. And while might some people might say, "Well, there's no need to be apathetic to the subject just because you don't know," it's like, well, what progress has there been? You know, I've I've paid vague attention to the chemtrail subject over the last three or four years. Has anything changed? Has anything altered? Has anybody got any more information on it? I don't think so. Same documentaries that get used when people say or explain what's in them is the same documentaries as being shared around today. Other than new footage of people having their area sprayed, what, what else is new? 
Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's certainly mysterious. I don't know. I don't understand it. I mean, I have, I doubt whether it's uh, extremely toxic because it seems like we would probably have started to see the effects of that if that were the case, right? Am I, sorry, am I still displaying, Nathan? No, but I'll stick you back up. Oh, right. Maybe some sort of effort at you are now. wide weather modification or something like that. The question is, what are the chems, right? Like everything's a chemical. So no matter what they're doing, you could barely describe it as a chemtrail. Agreed. But uh, yeah, it seems like if it was metals or something like that, that, you know, it would be pretty easy to for people to deduce that through some sort of tests. I don't know. I'm not sure. To me, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't spend too much time on it myself either. For the similar reasons to you, Nathan. Well, I think the point of what I'm trying to say is that I went to do some filming today and I wasn't able to see anything at all or document anything um, because of these chemtrails. That was the, that's the whole point. And the point was they were spraying that hard today. And yeah. you can can you see these water? Can you see the water here? Can you see how still it is? And you yeah. got like three three little ripples at the end. Now that was exactly the same, exactly the same conditions that I had when I saw uh, from one foot, and I saw a barrel, and I, I knew this was this was the forecast. <laughs> and to go along and then just see this, it was just so disappointing. So, call me a conspiracy theorist or whatever you want to choose, but I'm going to say it came out for me. Especially for me, stop me seeing Barrow again from a foot. <laughs> so the the chemtrails are just to block visibility, so people can't make flat Earth observations. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, no, not to block people's visibility, to block Ranties specifically. Ranties. Just mine, yeah, exactly. They, they knew I was onto something. They knew I'd be out there. We've probably had uh, the son of an astronaut phoning up. Uh, British Airways and the the RAF and came out and <laughs> they started uh, laying them really thick so I couldn't see anything. For any audience member, we are joking. We are not <laughs> conspiratards. <laughs> well, it could be. You know, you never know. Yeah, you never it could know. be as likely as not, but we don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> Uh, but that's where Barrow would have been. <sighs> what a shame. Never mind. There's always there's always more days in the week. Yeah, exactly. There's always other opportunities to try these things. So, you got anything else? Anything else? Not really. Um, can you jump on the back nope. door then? The back door? Of course can. Yeah. Wait, are you getting, are you getting attacked? No, but just in case. So far, so good. Right, okay. I'm on it. Um, what do you know to me? Sorry? What do you know? I don't know. <laughs> Not much. Any any more progress on your soundly uh presentation? Um well yesterday I was busy again. I'm planning to try to attack it over the weekend when I have more time during the day. And uh yeah, hopefully I can get Chris Monk on the horn and maybe he can help me out with some of the uh, challenges that I've encountered with it. But uh, yeah, should be good for next week at some point. Yeah, there's people like yourself and Chris, I've noticed the, I don't know, the more intellectual people, shall we say, are always outraged by Soundly. Me, I, can, I don't care. I can take Soundly or leave it. I don't care. But people like yourself get, I, I, I don't want to say in a tiz over it because it demeans what you're doing but what is it specifically about soundly that pisses you off so badly uh, it doesn't piss me off so badly it's just that um i just want i think what i want to you know what i'd like to show is that <clears throat> the 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 degree of fraud and the and the uh the kind of effort that's being made into fooling people and the sophistication of you know video editing technology and graphics these days is i would really like to be able to share that information with other flat earthers in a way that they could comprehend and also just so that you know if we could really establish the truth that somebody like that is actually going to 
what seems like, you know, to an average person to be a unbelievable degree of effort to create uh, uh, a f to create fraudulent evidence for in support of the uh, globe earth. You know, it reminds me of, although obviously you've not presented anything yet. Do you remember when um, Jaron got a piece of green card, green screen style color card and put it into yeah. his window behind his curtains and then basically filmed a piece of footage where he just walks up to the curtains and draws them and films the, the green bit behind his curtains, takes it into a piece of editing software and basically inserts, um, like a, I think he did, I can't remember which way around, he was either the ISS, his house became the ISS and he's doing an Earth flyby, or the other way around, his, his, his Earth view has suddenly got the ISS doing a flyby. I can't remember which, but the point was that it was... It was incredibly convincing. You know, obviously it's ludicrous because he's in a house and he's just drawing his curtains. But the end effect, yeah. you're like, wow, that's that's Jaron. He's probably maybe at the most plugged $80, $60 into that software. Maybe it's more, but you know what I'm getting at. It's not exactly millions of dollars, is it? It's just a guy with a PC. Yeah. Yeah, also just I think like similarly to Chris Monk, like when I look at that footage, I can just... I don't know. I can tell that it's fake by looking at it the same way that, you know, everyone can on some level with 3D graphics. There's going to be some level where everyone is going to be able to distinguish it from reality, from real footage, right? But I think that I spent a lot of time looking at that footage. And so certain things jump out at me now that probably don't jump out to the average viewer. But the average viewer has probably not spent much time looking at it. So I think that, I don't know, I think if anybody spent, you know, enough time just staring at it and under, looking at the details and, and watching it over and over again, that they would start to see the, the seams. So I just want to be able to point out what I'm, you know, the anomalies that I'm seeing and try to, uh, define you know just sort of define these anomalies more clearly and then hopefully prove something about them which is what i'm going to be trying to do next week it's, it's one of those things that used to frustrate people whenever i'd watch a movie because i, I worked in or was trained in production and how they yeah. put together sets and things of that nature and as a consequence when i'd watch movies proper big budget billion dollar not billion dollar you know millions of dollars put into the uh -huh. production i'd spot continuity errors really quickly you know, things yeah. that, that aren't quite right and most people don't spot continuity errors they're caught in the uh, their suspension of disbelief has taken over so therefore they don't spot things that aren't quite correct that are out of place me i can't help it you know and i'll point it out to people who are with me and normally get you know <laughs> huffy looks but you know yeah. i'm just one of those and you're the same you know you, you look at this stuff long enough and it's probably true for anybody if you watch the same movie over and over again you start to you know start to look at parts of the movie that you haven't looked at before in more yeah. detail and it's just a question of time before you will spot inconsistencies errors um as you have done so i'm quite excited i've got to be honest i like i like a good continuity error <laughs> yeah yeah well it's it's amazing how it's difficult to prove these things though sometimes you know like even when it's just staring you right in the face that our senses can be so easily confused with uh, technology and cameras and graphics, and it's very con it can be very confusing for people. Sure, and it's we're talking about stuff that somebody's spent a long time looking at the minutia to begin with, looking at the detail, because um, we're yeah. not talking about a motion picture here where you've got a team of editors all working on different parts from different cameras shot on different days in different orders and mistakes happen. We're talking about somebody who's focusing on one particular thing in detail and trying to get it as perfect as possible. And it's yeah. not that complicated, but you still make mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen. Yeah. Inevitably, yeah. If you look at anything closely enough, you're going to find the flaws. But reality doesn't... Uh, I don't know. It's pretty hard to match reality with fakery in the end. It was one of those Mandela effects that I liked. Um, well, not liked debunking, because one of the people that, that had this Mandela effect as a kind of Mandela proof was Dave Murphy. And Dave Murphy's like a god to me. I think he's absolutely amazing. But he, at, on the show I interviewed him, he explained about a Mandela effect that I knew 
really quite I knew a lot about because it had been used as a demonstration tool back in the late 90s when I was working in a hi-fi shop and it was all laser discs and you know selling people expensive equipment to get better pictures and yeah. we were down to the details of which laser disc was better because there was different versions of Star Wars and it was the one that you know you wanted to get the Criterion edition because it was one with the best colors simple as that and what you were trying to do with a customer is bring them downstairs as a skeptic because normally they'd come in with a mild enthusiasm but didn't want to show their hand. So they'd say, ah, oh, you know, I've already got this exceptionally good Sony television or whatever. I can't believe that 10 grand's going to get it any better than I've got already. It looks fantastic. And then, of course, you'd take them downstairs and show them on something that they were familiar with, like Star Wars, details that they hadn't seen before. You know, C-3PO Silver Leg immediately springs to mind. But most people right. haven't noticed these details because they haven't been given the equipment to notice the details. And then you move forward 20 years when everyone's got a high-definition telly and a Blu-ray player, and they start picking out details that they hadn't noticed before and think it's Mandela. You know, a frustrating one. Sorry, this isn't very flat earth, but who cares? Um, is the, the James Bond one, the, uh, the, the girl with the braces, which I haven't been able to debunk you know, that's the only Mandela effect left on the list for me. It's literally the only one I can think of. If someone's got more, I, I bet you anything it's already been debunked or has a reasonable explanation. But that that um, Jaws one, I can't I can't debunk it. I can't find a VHS copy of the TV broadcast of, of Moonraker or whichever it was um, oh. to, to see if she's still got braces in it on the TV broadcast. But that's my only explanation for it because I don't understand that one. But there we go. I wasn't even aware of that one. You know, the the Mandela effect, um, the um, the one that trips me the, out the most is the Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield fight, where, like, I pretty distinctly remember the story being that Mike Tyson bit off a chunk of Evander Holyfield's ear and spit it out onto the canvas. Right. Do you remember that? Yeah. I well, that's not what happened, actually. Okay. What happened? <laughs> He just bit his ear. He didn't bite off a piece of it and spit it out onto the canvas. Oh, right. No, I, I, I didn't think he'd spat it out onto the canvas. I remember it being on, you know, I remember the actual shot of him biting his ear being on the uh, um, front page of the newspapers. Um, but literally, he did just do that, just bite it. Didn't so that's how you remember it? I don't remember, remember spitting out a chunk onto the canvas, no, for certain. <laughs> I most people I've talked to can remember remember it similarly to me, which is that he like bit off a piece of it, and there was like a missing piece, and then he spit it out on the canvas. But I guess we all remembered it wrong or something, because when you go back and look, uh, no, he didn't actually bite off a chunk of the ear, just bit the ear. Yeah, just bit him. Hey, Josh, good to have you. Can you hear us. Still there, Nami? Yep. Yeah, just twisted memories. IPS used to say that um, the Mandela effect is standard media fare. In other words, they're always changing their story. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's symbolic of that idea. Because, yeah, I don't really think there's a true Mandela effect. Although these, I don't know, the other one is the mirror, mirror on the wall. That's another one where, I don't know, I so distinctly remember the queen, the um, the line being mirror, mirror on the wall and not magic mirror on the wall. And seems almost unbelievable that it was magic mirror on the wall, but I guess it wasn't. It's just, you know it's just rep repetitive. That's people on talk shows and comedy shows and... All that sort of stuff saying mirror, mirror. Yeah, I guess so. Is. But it's, <laughs> it's strange though, because I really see, like, I don't, I never would have second guessed my memory on that one if I was asked. Fair enough. I don't know. All the Mandela effects, like, there's a lot of them, they really do seem like strange, but. I guess it's just people identifying weird memory glitches for whatever the reason, like, you know, the Forrest Gump one. There's a lot of weird ones. But they're all benign. You know, who cares? Yeah. With all of them. Yeah. Not, 
Yeah, I'm not I'm not a big Mandela effect person. I just think it's kind of a, a lark, really. It, it pissed it was one it was the first thing that pissed me off in Flat Earth, actually. So within a couple of weeks I'd, um, you know, I'm searching through videos. There was very limited flat Earth information in in YouTube at that time. So you came across yeah. other garbage, and Jesse Spots was one of those first things I came across, and him talking about the Mandela effect, and I was just outraged. <laughs> you know, I was just like, this is such nonsense. You know, debunked half of what he came out with almost on the spot. The rest I did a little bit of research into to see if I was right and or he was right. And I was right, <laughs> of course. And, you know, I left him a scathing message and made a video about him. And I was like, this is just nonsense. You know, you find out something so so pinnacle in terms of the nature of your world. And immediately what you come up against, or at least back then, three years ago, what you came up against was total and utter conspiratard garbage. You know, just nonsense. Whatever happened to Jesse Spots, is he still going? I have no idea. Never really watched him too much. Wasn't really my cup of tea. Yeah, not even hit and miss. Miss, 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 hit. You know, occasionally you'd, you'd get something that was like right on the money or interesting at the least. But, you know. Yeah, he's one of these people that I suspect might be, a, you know, a plant or something like that. Not really a genuine flat earther. Mm, I don't know that either way. All I do know is that. Yeah. That was the, that, that was the first thing that pissed me off. You like you find out a fundamental truth about the world, something that you've always kind of felt, or I had always or felt in my bones, and then yeah. it's it's you're like this is actually how the world is. And then the next thing on your list is Mandela effect. We live in a simulated reality, and things can change like black cats walking across the matrix twice. What a load of nonsense! Hmm. Have you ever talked to him live? Uh, yes, I have. I did a show with him. Um, what was the show about? I think it was about neural linguistic programming. Mm. And he was quite, he was well up on the subject. You know, I was just chatting to, um, I can't remember who was on the show. I think it might have been Stephen Chess. And I was like, who do you know? Who knows their stuff on NLP? And he pointed me in Jesse Spot's direction. And I was like, really? Fair enough. So <coughs> Jesse came on, talked about it with us and seemed to know a reasonable amount about it i was i was pleased with the result yeah so i did chat with him once live nlp was the subject i don't know too much about neuro-linguistic programming neither did i at the time but i found it fascinating you know I'd just done a bit of reading on it so i was like who knows about this subject hence jesse spots was on so it's just about using language to uh guide people's perceptions as you speak with them right Yes and no. I mean, it's the way it always gets, just, or the way it was described when I was researching, it was almost like a self-help technique more than a a methodology to program others. Although that is, in in its nefarious guise, is how it's portrayed. So yes and no. It's like the alchemy of sales, really, right? Yeah, I suppose. It's planting buzzwords into people's minds and then building little networks of signification and things like that. Yeah, I don't know. Mm, not really. <laughs> I don't think it works on me, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Gone so far off flat earth, it's untrue. But this is what happens when you get limited trolling. That's how I see all, all Globers. Even if they don't realise it, they're just trolling. Yeah. They don't even know it yet. Some of them. Some of them do. There doesn't seem to be that many people who are interested in having a genuine conversation or debate. It seems like, you know, 90% of the people who deal with this subject are trolls of one shade or another. Hey, Arwin. Oh, hey. Hello. Hello. I don't know where Ranty went. Must have PC problems. I think he probably abandoned the conversation when we started talking about Sandley because he's a uh, he's a big fan of Sandley's work. Why do you say he's a fan? Well, because he's always like so vehemently defending its uh, its genuine character, right? Mm. He's a uh, he's a defend. You know, he's a proponent of 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 uh, 
of its uh, authenticity. He, re- so he has a strong disagreement. Like he got really mad when I first brought that up, that it was uh, that suggesting that 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 those videos might not be authentic was was really offensive to him. I think in his mind, he's, he he can capture the same thing, or he can get close to similar effects. Therefore, if he can debunk what he's claiming based on those pieces of footage that's where you debunk him in in Ranty's mind I think you debunk him based on being able to replicate it and say here's the other explanation rather than saying actually it's it's just not real that's not how the world looks which is your approach yeah yeah I, I know I just think that that may be why he uh left the conversation because it seemed like it was when we started talking about that that he uh but I genuinely don't think he's a soundly fan I wouldn't put him in that camp yeah, okay, maybe that's not the right term. I mean, there are soundly fans. I mean, Tony Vincenzo, if I'm saying his, right, his name correctly, is is a soundly fan. You know, more power to him. Great, you know, I'm not going to like who you okay, like. Okay, maybe, just... maybe I should say he's an, a soundly apologist. Um, yes, that I would agree with. He's definitely a soundly apologist. Even if he doesn't agree with soundly. So he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to uh, be inculcated as a kook for the you know making these kind of accusations about it although it doesn't really matter because you know once you're a flat earther you're already all the way in in the kook you're already 100 percent kook so it doesn't really matter what you say anyway mm. right you're not going to get any more kooky than being a flat earther so you may as well go full bore but that maybe that's what outraged me so much about jesse spots you know in one breath he's saying the earth is flat and the next breath he's saying um mandela effect and yeah. while I don't consider myself to be that kooky, yeah, I'm a flat yeah. earther. Yeah, I know that the earth is obviously flat, but I don't see that as particularly kooky, just recognising the obvious nature of the world around you. That's just being a bit a bit more observant maybe than some, you know, looking at my phone less and not having a television set, all that kind of stuff. But that, that that's not, like, eccentric. Whereas, you know, um, what was the other one? Clone centres... That's just bonkers. No offence to Ranty either, but chemtrails, you know, speculating about it, saying this is what they are, like Ranty did. I've got nothing against what Ranty showed. This is the crap in the sky. It stopped me from seeing stuff. Yep, I'll agree with that, 100%. Calling them chemtrails, don't care what the title is. But when you start to draw conclusions, they're poisoning us. How do you know they are? Well, because of the, the measured content of the chemtrails, of what they actually leave behind. It, there's been a lot of research done. Says who? Some guy on YouTube. No. Says people I met in person that oh, okay. spent a decade getting into that. Tell me more. Who and have you met that knows about chemtrails, Alwyn? It's all over the world. In America, in England, in, uh, in the Netherlands, France, all over the place. So what did they, what did they find was the composition of the chemtrails, Arwen? Well, they found specifically that, uh, especially after '95, when the chemtrails pretty much started up, that there was a, an extreme heightened amount of uh, aluminum in the water samples, in the surface water samples, and that there was barium oxide. And those were the primary components that seem to have increased many fold since the chemtrail started up. There's also been some other uh, heavy metals been detected. And there's also been, uh, yeah, mysterious new fungi and even certain bacteria that have been spotted in surface water that w- whose origin are just uh, unknown. They don't know where it's coming from, but those uh, are not all present they seem to be more sporadic but the aluminum and the barium oxide are universal so they've been taking samples prior to the chemtrailing and how do they distinguish whether that the well, water samples have been taken uh, for a century this is just part of uh, ecology uh, and so that is basically it, it wasn't there and they have personally tested it themselves they took the water samples okay but then you know aluminum and barium are pretty much harmless right so no 
No? No, they are not. Okay, but then we don't see, like, people's health, generally speaking, is in, has been improving over the last 20 years, not decre not declining, right? Like, people no, are living... No, it has not. It absolutely has not. According to who? According to statistics. Which statistics are you looking at? Uh, Western world statistics. So Western world statistics. Yeah, don't know the that amount of cancer thing. has been exploding many fold, like a hundred times in the last 20 years, something in that direction, but used to be extremely rare. Uh, also just uh, universal obesity, all that kind of stuff. Now there is also been a degeneration in the food quality and GMOs have also been introduced. So it is really hard to trace it all back to one single source, but it does not help. And it's well known that aluminum is a great burden uh, to the brain. Yeah, I don't it disrupts this from. brain activity. Where and this is this even from, tested Marwin? in uh, the aluminum that is where present this from? in deodorant. In many where, where are you getting uh, this information deodorants. from? It's where known are you getting it from? What's there. your source for this information? Sorry? What's your source for this information? Um, it's all over the place. Okay, the way that, you know, from what I've looked at... This is what I was into in the last 20 years, so... Medical okay, stuff. I've looked at a lot of, like, statistics dealing with cancer That's and... News, Infowars, all, all over the place. Okay, well, Infowars is not necessarily... Well, Natural News is. It's a very reliable source. They have their own laboratory, so... Well, I don't consider any of these sources to necessarily be reliable. Oh, but... I do. Okay. I've been following them. I've basically followed all of their advice, uh, food-wise. Uh, I learned a lot. I learned about colloidal silver from them. I, I basically started eating organic because of them. So I don't care that you don't find them reliable. They're probably not very reliable when it comes to a source of cosmology because they're both, of, of course, globus, but... When it comes to medical knowledge, they are very much... Well, Arwen, they I had a lot of alternative doctors on their shows. Arwen, I wasn't had, picking done on... a lot of research all over their lives. So. When I wasn't picking on those sources, I said I don't, I don't necessarily think any particular source is reliable. But I will say that I've looked at a lot of health statistics. And as far as I can tell, cancer rates... Like, I don't know where, where you're getting your cancer statistics, but it's apparently... Well, how about hospital cancer. admittance? The amount of cancer treatments that are no, now being done. You have to look at the, the, act, the, the number of hospital admittance is going to have to be looked at as a demographic percentage, right? There's more people. There's more people that are going into... There's, more, there's the baby boomer generation, right, who are aging now. So there's going to be more hospital more people entering the hospital because there's more old people suffering from health problems. No, but there's a big old, old, cancer disease. is not an old people disease. No, that's absolutely nonsense. Every disease, all diseases affect the elderly more, right? Because everybody dies of something. Yeah, but uh, in these, in this case, there are now uh, younger people uh, as old as in their twenties that are being uh, basically treated for Alzheimer, that kind of stuff. That did not happen 20 years ago, ever, ever. Uh, okay, well, I so, haven't... Uh, there's I've never a lot of cancer patients uh, ranging from between eight years old and like 40, and that happens a lot. I've never known of... I've never known personally or even known of a person that was in my immediate circle who ever had... who had cancer... That well, that's pretty people. rare because I don't know anybody else that you know, does not have a cancer crazy. case in their family, including Arwen, my own mother and sentence. several nephews. Arwen, or... you didn't let me finish my sentence. Okay? Okay. I said between eight and 40. Well, I do. I didn't, I've didn't. i had people in my family who had cancer. I've just never known anyone who had cancer who was I had an I had an eight-year-old nephew, I, to be honest, never actually, or a uh, niece, and she died. Okay, Hi, so Zoe. yeah, that happens. Okay, so but maybe that's Hi. biasing your, your point of view, right? Uh, Hi. I'm oh, oh, sorry, God. Frank. I thought you were a troll, so I kicked you. I'm really sorry. I'm still here. No, not you, Zoe. I kicked a guy called Frank because <laughs> I just assumed he was a troll. Sorry, oh, Frank, okay. whoever you were. But, but okay, so Arwen, what cancer 
statistic, what source of cancer statistics do you consider to be reliable? Because if you're going to cite natural news, they're going to be talking about it. People actually walking around uh, having obvious cancer treatment without any hair at an age that you should never have that. Okay, but that's, that, that's it's anecdotal. That's anecdotal. The amount of hospitals that just have a lot of cancer patients. It's it's well known. But it could be. But the rates overall could be down, right? No, because no, it's not. It's increasing. It's not says down. Who? Says who, Arwin? Says everyone. Who's everyone? Not says everyone. Sorry, but uh, can you look up any source, any at all, like ever? that's out there that says that it's not increasing because yeah. I'd like to see that because you're just making this wild untested wet finger work statement here and you don't base it on anything. Oh, I do base it. I base oh, it on, on what, on what, that you don't have any case in your family. No, I've looked at a lot of health statistics. I'm not, and I'm not saying that those necessarily. Oh, the death rate. Yeah. Yeah, the death rate has went down. That could definitely be because there's a lot more treatments, especially alternative treatments that work a lot better. They pr pretty much figured out that cannabis oil very works very well against it, although the medical industry does not like to admit it. But just because the death rate is down doesn't mean that yeah, well, the amount just, of I, cancer yeah. cases have went up dramatically, many fold. No, I don't think that that's true. No, well, I do. Okie dokie then. Well, I would say that, um, especially with the neurological diseases, that has definitely got, gone up. And uh, it definitely uh, attributed to chemtrails and the aluminum in the chemtrails. Well, it's, 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 it's not definite, definite okay? Chemtrails. It's, 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 Vaccinations. It's not definite. Yeah, vaccinations, but I mean, definitely vaccinations. No more vaccinations. So like many. The flu more. There's nothing definite about any of this. You know, where's your proof? It could be, but it's not definite. Definite yes, is, is very overconfident. Yes, right. it is. No, Laboratory no, studies, no, medical it, studies, it, thousands no, of it, people's it, being tested. Not, You're not a doctor, Nami. Stick to freaking physics. Well, you're not a doctor either, so we're both just trying to sort this out. But I mean, just, you know, um, insisting and making uh, sweeping assertions is not helpful to the conversations, to figuring out the truth of it. It could be that you're right. I admit that you could be right, but you're not admitting that you could be wrong. That's the problem. That's why you're not going to sort this out at all, right? You're, you've already, it's a foregone conclusion in your mind. Cancer. Well, the conclusion has been based on, on... And it's caused by chemtrails. You've already decided. No, You're not willing chemtrails to look into is them. just a part of it. It's you put all the things together and they create a general burden on the body and that creates yeah. eventually a cataclysm. Come, it goes out of control. It's like putting a pressure on a society. When the pressure rises from all directions, then eventually a, a revolt starts to occur and that's the same way the body functions that's how it works and i don't care that you're skeptical that's about true. that well, this is my field this is what i do i'm my own doctor i'm a very serious I've looked into a lot of things and i know how it works so do you think that's that life's that uh average lifespans have increased in the last 20 years or not uh I think that it pretty much stayed the same. Yeah. Okay. So if what what would you consider if I was able I can explain to, that. I can explain look yeah, I've been matter. watching shows that talk about these statistics. What has happened in the last hundred years is that the amount of uh child deaths, uh, especially to child related diseases and labor deaths, uh like uh, child labor death that that has decreased extremely in the Western world. But at the same time, people die from diseases a lot more. Shout out to Tony Vincento, who got a comment earlier. Happy Friday. How did you trick a girl into coming here? We did, we did. I, because people are living longer, that we're getting no, more people cases. People are not living longer. That is the whole problem. 
Well, by it, all accounts, this is something that's getting repeated all the time. People are living longer now. People are living it's longer true. now. Well, by all, that's just okay. a repeating so, thing. So you don't. So, so okay. So you get you're getting statistics about cancer that you believe from somewhere, right? Presumably, but those same types types of sources. Like, okay, so what sources do you consider to be reliable for cancer statistics and lifespan? Because, well, just listen to people how old their parents. grandparents are when they die. Well, all okay? my grandparents have, have it lived. It used to be dying. like 80. Now it it's usually more in 70s. No, it's the other way around. No, it isn't. It's more like 70s. Now it's usually like 80s or 90s. Well, that's my experience. All my grandparents lived to be into their 90s. Well, that's very good All for you, but I'm not just talking about my own because my grandmother also was 95. Yeah, but she died. Okay, then what, but on okay. average, just we listen to the stories, ask people, grandparents tend to die a lot sooner or they get really ill and then they're kept alive for a very long period. That's the whole point is, is that when people age nowadays in the Western world, they tend to contract a lot of diseases, a lot of very serious problems, a lot more. While 50 years ago and before that, like 70 years ago, the people then when they grew old, they didn't have as much problems, like slight problems, like uh, arthritis, annoying things, but not deadly diseases. That's the big difference. Yeah, so but you have to consider- days, people could die very young by accident, by uh, child labor, death, that kind of thing. But people that survived tended to grow a lot older with less okay. problems. That okay. is how it changed. What? Okay. So what do you can? What would you consider to be a reliable source of data on lifespan worldwide? What source? Um, I'll just look into anything and then see if I if I find them reliable. That's how we okay, do it. Okay. So is it going to be if they confirm what you think, then it's reliable, and if they go against it, then it's not? Like well, if I mean, they're going to uh, say certain things that I know that are obvious propaganda, that I know that are not true from my own experience, then I will but distrust. You're, you're them. Not, okay, but Arwen, your own experience isn't going to tell you about millions and millions of cases, right? Like even if you took no, all but them. I've looked through hundreds of thousands of pages and watched a lot of movies on medical stuff. And I have family that are into this. My father is into alternative medicine. Has done a lot of study, done a lot of reading, and uh, I, I consider indeed myself as a source. I can pretty much test how reliable I think somebody is. Okay. So, yeah. Sorry. It's not scientific. You don't proof. have to be sorry, but I'm just saying. No, I am not sorry. That was sarcasm. It's not scientific proof. I don't care. I know what <clears> I know. <throat> and well, I trust myself and my own judgment in this. I don't think you do know. I yeah, hope. I do. And I don't <laughs> care that you think that I don't know because well, you I'm willing think to a lot of those types of I things think the about everyone. You I'm think to you're admit. always right and everybody's always no, wrong. I'm willing to admit. Like no, I'm saying you could be right, but I don't think that your, I think your level of confidence far exceeds the information that you have available to you. No, I, I don't think so. Well, I, think I have a lot of information available and I, I don't even talk about half the things that I do look into. That well, completely that derail have... the entire medical concept. Yeah, I'm. I have a lot of problems with the entire medical concept as well, and I think that the drug yeah. industry and the healthcare industry is pretty corrupt. But yeah, but the... you probably don't even know the half of it. Look, the thing is, really there are all like kinds of angles to me. medical problems, and you can address it through all these angles, all of them. And I do. I look at it through all the angles even the angles that completely deny the existence of viruses and bacteria and all of that, even the concept of a disease as an invasion. So well, the germ, I look at it through all angles. The germ theory of disease is debatable. Yes, right? it is. So there's a lot of uh, unknowns in this whole picture. Well, they're not, but, really, but that, a, but they're but not really that unknown. There's an entire uh, alternative medical system that has been worked out as the alternative there's books about this i have yeah, but the alternative isn't necessarily right either well it seems to be 
Just because there's an alternative, it's not a binary. Well, if I have certain problems, medical issues like pain in the yeah. jaw, that stuff, then I can look it up where it's coming from. And it's pretty reliable. Well, I'm just saying that getting back to the original point, there's no solid proof that chemtrails are causing particular diseases or lowering lifespan. No, but that's that's but, not. No, but it's like a, a consequence. It's not necessarily that. It's a burden. Oh, they're they're trying to poison us. No, not necessarily. That's just a by effect. That's a side effect mm -hmm. of nothing. The, the, I don't, they I don't weather manipulation. Some guys specifically to do that, and they may even there may be even correlation. Uh, to we don't even know what's right out of, of the flu. But that, that's the thing. It's not just a whimsical conclusion. It's based on, on test after test after test after test. And then you come to, you, you can't you inevitably have to come to the conclusion, well, yeah. there's, there's aluminum and barium and, and yeah. strontium in these trails. And, and when you breathe in, people are making up, you know. When you breathe well, it in, when you that... ingest alum aluminum, or you breathe it in fine dust it has very measurable consequences on the body it is on the, a poison. On the neurological aspects yes definitely yes and that's why it, the word it bio accumulates if, if you make a tomato uh, soup in an aluminium pot it will leach the aluminium into the soup yeah that's and why you're not supposed to too. eat acidic things out of aluminum pots and that's why there were so many that got uh, um, alzheimer's uh, back in the 80s because they a lot that generation had used aluminum pots yep and um but nowadays you see so many young people getting weird neurological diseases i mean I and it's that very that much up on the uprise yeah, but you know why the, that's that information that younger people are getting more neurological diseases i'm not yeah. seeing i don't know that's yeah, well, it it's is. it's just remarkable to see how many people are getting MS, how many people are getting this uh, weird thing called myasthenia gravis. <laughs> I mean, that uh, people down, children get get it. I mean, this is things yeah, but that's something that's always happened. Are no, you sure? It's it's not. Really increased? No, no, it's not. So children never got neurological diseases in the past. That's not like this. Going over no, in the like other uh, other end of the scale you know you don't have to like you just said before you, you don't said have no, to either. Not. it's not a binary exactly. thing it's not either oh they were never exactly. they never had this or now they're all suddenly it's, it's exactly so i'm just saying to you guys i think you should be skeptical of the conclusions that you've already drawn as well because i'm i'm admit i'm willing to acknowledge that you could be right but you're not willing to acknowledge that you could be wrong and with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully for sharing this debate. And also a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. If you've not done so already, be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day.